hello hi guys welcome back to the channel i hope everyone are doing great i'm also doing good so recently we have faced issue with one of my spark streaming job uh, with related to the gc issue and we struggled a lot to find out the issue and to fix the issue and uh, in this journey i have learned so many new concepts related to the gc so i thought i can share that uh, information to everyone so that if anyone are facing the similar issue with their spark uh, jobs so they can use it and uh, they, they can uh, you know they, they can take uh, this as you know uh, reference and they can uh, solve their problem okay so in this video i'm going to talk about what is the gc and what are the roles of the gc in the spark and what are the default configurations of the gc and what are the issues of the gc how to find the issue with the gc and how should we fix the issue and what are the configuration that we can control on the gc and you know the final conclusion okay so we'll learn about all these points in the gc okay so first we need to understand what is the gc so gc is nothing but garbage collector so what is meant by the garbage collector so garbage collector is a kind of a service that available in the heap memory this will actually help you to clean up some space of the heap okay it will clean up some space and it can give more space to the further execution okay so where it will be available and all those things we can see it in the video so usually this gc was available in two places one is on the driver and the executor okay so usually we all know that executor memory will be further uh, you know divided into multiple sections like you know user memory executor jvm i can say okay so executor jvm will be further divided into user memory Resolved memory, storage memory, and compute memory. So these sections we already know it, and it will be divided, right? So when you come to this compute section, so inside the compute section, it will be further divided into the multiple sections. So the one is Eden section, or one is young generation, okay, and another one is old generation, okay. So this young generation will be further divided into the Eden and S1, S0, S1. Okay. S0 means survivor 0, survivor 1, and we can have old gen as is. Okay. So this will be further divided into three sections of younger generation, old generation. Okay. So next you see what is the role of the GC in this part. So whenever in the heap memory, usually heap memory will be used to execute any of the data or any of the processing the data, right? So usually during that process, it will create some sort of a temporary files or intermediate objects or any other uh, or temporary objects, right? So to delete these objects, GC will be helpful. Okay. So GC will be run and it will be remove the unused objects and it will climb some free space so that heap can get more space to execute the upcoming job. Right. So that is a help of GC. That is a use of the GC. Okay. So what are the default configurations of the GC? So when it comes to the default configurations of the GC, let's say we have a 300 MB for total heap memory. So out of which younger young generation will be allocated to 100 MB and old generation will be allocated to 200 MB. Okay. So usually one third will be the younger generation and two third will be the older generation. Usually older generation has more space compared to younger generation. Okay. Now let's see how the uh, GC is going to help you. So if you wanted to execute any of the job to create a data frame RDD or anything that will be happen in the Eden memory. Okay. So and the execution will be taken care. So if the space was not sufficient, it will be moved to S0. And if the S0 was filled, it will be moved to S2. Okay. So even S2 will be filled, it will be moved to older generation. Okay. So like how the sequence would be. So at any point of time, if GC runs, Okay, so GC runs on frequent interval to find out any of the unused objects and to climb some free space, right? So whenever it runs, right, so unused objects and temporary files will be deleted in the Eden, or even it will uh, scan even in the S0 and S2 and it will get deleted. So if objects are not deleted from long time, so that will be moved to the old generation because that it will treat it as like long lived objects and it should be there in the JVM or heap memory to further processing. Right. So that's how different uh, stages of the memory will work. Now we have a uh, multiple types of GC scanners are available. Okay. So one is like frequent GC cycles. Okay. Second one is long GC. Third one is full GC. Okay. So in case of frequent GC, so this will be applied on the Eden memory, Eden memory or younger, younger generation. Okay. So this frequent GC will be run on younger generation. So that it, it will be run on very frequent basis. And is there any unused object? It will be climbed and it will be processed. Okay. So this will be the frequent uh, GC. And the second one is a long GC. So this will uh, run on S0 and S1. Okay. So if there is any space uh, that it is uh, required, it will try to uh, climb that space. So during that process, it will take a long time to run the GC cycles. So that is nothing but long GC. Next, we can have a full GC. So usually full GC will be applied when we need to clean up this old generation, right? So because old generation usually have the larger uh, memory compared to younger generation, that's why it needs a full cycle. So when it runs the full GC, it will clean up the entire heap memory. So these are the different types of GC cycles are available. So next we'll see what is the problems of this GC. Okay. So when you run the GC is very frequent cases. Okay. So when the GC was applying on a very frequent, that means that you do not have enough memory to process the data. 
okay so that's the reason every time it will uh, frequently call the gc so most of the time it will spend to clean up the objects rather than executing the object so that is a one problem the second thing is long gc so when you encounter the long gc right so your job or your task take a long time to process and sometimes it will get hung it will get killed as well right so when you have the full gc usually this will take a longer time to uh, process the data and uh, that that's where you you can see some uh, delay in your job execution so you have already seen how we can uh, find out that uh, gc issues in the spark ui using the executor and the stage time now we can see how we can able to find out in the logs as well like we have a std error and a std uh, std error and std out logs right so we can also see that for that we need to enable using the spark dot executor extra java options and driver also extra java options you need to add this particular line to your spark submit job so that it can generate your the logs so once you generate the logs you can able to see three to four types of issues usually in the gc one is like frequent gc so in case of the frequent gc you see this kind of a logs okay so this kind of logs are very frequent you see in this case it is for every two seconds the gc is performing that means this is too frequent gc right so very two seconds is very less that's why we can call it as a frequent uh, gc and the frequent gcs are like you know short pauses such as that younger generation is too small our objects are promoted to too often means the memory is not sufficient in the younger generation either you can increase the memory or you can increase the memory on the younger generation or you can increase the jvm heap so if you see this gc allocation it is having this number right so what does it mean is like before gc it was like 5 mb okay after gc it was 6 mb so total 61 mb so that means after gc it was able to clean 1 mb of space so that's the meaning of this one and total time it has taken okay so if you see the same uh, similar case in case of a long gc you see in the long gc it has taken 1.23 seconds to process this gc and this has recorded this much space right since 1.23 is bit longer okay in the gc alone so that's why we can consider it as like major long gc process so usually when you have a long gc process we can see issue something like task delays or task timeouts and task retries and executor lost sometimes executor also can be dead and we need to initiate the new executor right even the task Uh, exceeded or stage also exceeded stage max retries exceeded something we can see that error okay so the next thing is full gc so whenever we have this old gen old gen is fully uh, full then we can trigger this full gc so that it will clean up all heap memory okay so that it includes newer generation and older generation usually this will take a long time and this is too expensive right so it take 3.8 seconds okay so this particular job has taken 3.5 seconds and this is too long and likely to hit the performance so in case of this it will be uh, you know it will your job will get hung or your job it will get uh, uh, stuck or you may see some performance issues as well okay so that is a full gc the next one is gc overhead warning right in the jvm you can see this gc overhead limit exceeded right so when you find this kind of issue that means the jvm spent too much time in the gc and record too little memory right so in this case you will see this issue in this case you have to increase the memory to uh, process this one so in our case we face the issue with the full gc cycle okay so when we have this full gc space where uh, we uh, you know we, our gc is taking a long time usually we can say it is taking greater than 10% of total execution time that it has taken we find out and we increase the executor memory okay and then we were able to solve this issue and we tried with the different options by increasing the uh, old generation young generation and all but instead that uh, by increasing simple executor memory will solve that issue and uh, that i felt that was pretty much easy uh, compared to uh, you know changing the values to this one so we can also change the values to younger generation and uh, the older generation but compared to that uh, you know increasing the memory on the executor is bit easier okay so in case of the overhead memory we can uh, we can try with increasing the executor memory or uh, overhead memory so we have overhead memory on both the driver and executor try to increase these things and we can see whether you can see your job is executing or not now we can conclude like gc conclusion so if your job has long task time you need to see the gc process and check the gc time in the spark ui or in the logs okay the next thing is if you lost the executors very frequent basis or the name like long gc or oem you need to check the standard error or executor logs in the spark ui okay the next thing is frequent full gc okay so not enough memory or memory leaks might be happen okay so in case of the frequent full gc that means that memory was not sufficient or some memory leakage was happening gc logs show the old generation cleanup very often okay so next thing is high gc timeouts in executor taps that means it is memory pressure compared with memory usage and the task matrix right so if you follow these things we can able to identify the issue okay so i hope you understand uh, the complete information about the gc related issues how we can find out that issue how we can solve this issue you know what is the gc where we can use it what are the things that we need to check okay and all those things hope you like the content if you like the content please give a like and uh, add a comment to give any feedback or uh, to have any questions and please do subscribe to our channel for more such informative interesting data engineering related content thank you